Hey Vikes, I'm Allie and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. We caught up with Mr. Staley with more on Banner Awards. What's up, Vikes? Today I'm here with Mr. Staley to learn more about the Spring Bands Awards concert. So what did you do to accomplish this? Well, obviously we couldn't get everybody together in one place. So Mrs. Kennedy and I came up with the idea to have a virtual awards concert. So we got all the lettering together and all the awards all in a list. We went to the high school with you and Quinn filmed us going through pretending that there was a concert, uh, like actual people there, and had a little bit of fun while we were doing it. And then we let all the seniors know that received awards, uh, and then we met them outside of their house, um, kept our distance, of course, pretended to put a trophy down, high five, and then we, you inserted that in between of where we were in, in the uh, stage. So uh, put all that together, and it's one big, one big awards concert. It was really fun. Was it pretty serious? Yeah, as you know, I can't be serious all the time. So <laughs> uh, there's a lot of fun things inside of it, but uh, it's serious as far as giving the kids the awards. But we had some fun along the way. Where can we go watch this video? There is a link that I made it private. So you can't just go to YouTube and find it. You have to find a band member that had it as, a, uh, as an assignment on Schoology. They can forward it to you, or you can go to the Seaman Viking Band's Facebook page and it's on there as well. Anything else you'd like to add? It was a lot of fun. Um, it's sad to be there and no one around but uh, I think if you watch the video you, you'll see that we have a lot of fun in the band program. Check it out. All right make sure to go check it out. Ali back to you. Oh hey seniors. Normally this time SVTV is shooting senior thank yous. Don't worry, we're still making senior thank yous, but this year, DIY. If you're interested in making your own video, you can view the link to a tutorial on the Class of 2020 Schoology page, or in your own government class. If you'd like to submit your senior thank yous, you can submit it to your government class, or email me at aaronmcgill at usd345students.com. All submissions are due May 15th, and remember, these are for graduation. That's all for me. Make sure to remember, it's always a great day to be a Viking. Good afternoon to you. We saw some rain in the area yesterday. That totaled two-tenths of an inch at the Billard Airport before ending early this morning. And now we're gonna be staying dry throughout the next few days. But taking a look at your forecast for tomorrow, it is gonna be a very cold start with temperatures in the 30s during the morning, but they will quickly warm it's back into the low 60s during the afternoon. So we'll call it a mild day, but still about 10 to 15 degrees below average for this time of year. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna be staying dry through the weekend, but early next week, our rain chances start to increase. This is Monday night into Tuesday. There's a chance for some light rain showers to move across portions of the state. The better chances may miss us to the south, but I think we could still see a few showers here in Northeast Kansas, again, coming in Monday night and lingering into Tuesday as well. Then, later in the week, the Gulf of Mexico is gonna open up for about the first time this year. The weather pattern is going to allow for a surge of moisture, so we haven't had a lot of real sticky days outside. Monday and Tuesday are gonna be continuing to feel kinda of dry, despite the rain chances, but by Wednesday and Thursday, the humidity is going to surge with dew points in the 60s and maybe even 70s. So you'll definitely notice the sticky feeling in the air by the middle and latter portions of next week. Here's how that looks on the SVTV 7-day forecast. Tomorrow will be cloudy despite the 
high of 61 degrees. Perhaps even even cooler morning on Sunday with a low of 37. And then there come the rain chances next week. Monday and Tuesday looking pretty cool with highs in the low to mid 50s. And then much warmer weather along with those higher dew points. We're tracking highs that could approach 80 degrees by next Thursday. And you know what that means? There could be some severe weather during this time frame as well. The details are still very uncertain this far out. But stay tuned here to SVTV Weather as we fine-tune this forecast. And we'll keep you updated. But for now, that is your latest weather forecast. Now, back to your anchor. Gosh, Cindy has a story over what teacher has been doing in quarantine. With quarantine being gradually lifted, let's go find out what Ms. Lippy's been doing. Training for half marathon. Not very fast, but that's been fun and time consuming going out on the trails. Um, I live in Lawrence, so most of the parks are closed, but the trails are open. So trying to take advantage of that and um, lots of cooking and like baking projects, um, you know, just trying to use what's in the pantry, fun stuff like that. I'm taking my dog Ruby on lots of walks um, because she loves to be outside. Um, She's over here, sleeping. <laughs> um, and some house projects. Um, I mean, we rent a condo uh, or a duplex, whatever you want to call it, but just kind of cleaning, updating, putting things together, making it more homey, you know, since we're here a lot more than we normally are. <laughs> I watched Tiger King, y'all. Oh, so intense. So angrifying. So I watched that. I've also been re-watching Gilmore Girls because it's a classic. Can't go wrong with Gilmore Girls, you know? Um, and um, Criminal Minds. I didn't, like, I originally when the coronavirus first, like, you know, came out or was discovered and we started seeing active cases, I thought kind of naively that it was going to be, like, SARS, where, um, you know, when I was younger, that was like a big deal, but it kind of stayed over uh, in the East and never really became an issue over here. And it wasn't like a, you know, a national pandemic uh, or an international pandemic. So I kind of assumed it was going to be like that. And then, you know, all of a sudden we can't go anywhere and have to wear face masks. So I think it's a, I think it's a terrible tragedy. And I also think that there is a lot of misinformation um, being presented, uh, which makes it difficult in such a dangerous situation to find out, you know, what should we be doing or what can we be doing? And, um, you know, I would rather play it safe rather than sorry, um, than, you know, being more careful with face masks or not traveling or not seeing people and, um, and things like that. But, um, I don't know, it's just really, it's hard. And it, there's, you know, I feel like, especially the public school systems, we're prepared for every emergency. Like, we have plans for, like, bus evacuations, tornadoes, fire drills, all this stuff. But then this is, I don't think this is the one thing that anybody was prepared for. Like, not even hospitals, not, you know, our CDC. Like, nobody saw this kind of, like, international pandemic spreading, especially as fast as it did. So I think it caught everybody off guard. That's all for today, Vikes. Have a great rest of your day.